संधान ऑल गुजरात इंटीग्रेटेड क्लासरूम सैटेलाइट ना माध्यम थी जोड़ती कड़ी एटले संधान हेलो ऑल माय डियर फ्रेंड्स डियर कलीग्स एंड ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स नाउ टुडे आई एम हियर बिफोर यू टू स्पीक ऑन द टॉपिक फेलिंग ऑफ अ बनियन ट्री फ्रेंड्स एंड स्टूडेंट्स एज ऑल ऑफ यू नो दैट दिस इज अ पोएम बाय एन इंडो एंग्लियन पोएट दिलीप चित्रे एंड आई होप यू नो समथिंग अबाउट इंडो एंग्लियन लिटरेचर बिकॉज बेसिकली दिस इज अ कंटेंट ऑफ इंडो एंग्लियन लिटरेचर which happens to be indo anglian poetry now indo anglian literature started during british empire when in bengal an english poet and a bureaucrat he thought that it would be better if uh, these indians also create something create some pieces of literature in english and uh, by this incidents the indo anglian literature started and it is believed that michael madhusudan dat was the first indo anglian poet now that was way back in 19th century after that we have seen and a lot of changes in this field now if we talk before independence we have a major poets such as sarojini naidu arvind tagore arvind ghosh but after the independence when we got independent in 1947 we have seen a lot of poets and the number is increasing continuously so we are living in such a world now where english has not remained a foreign language to us rather it has become our own language now this indo anglian literature has seen a lot of changes and uh, nearly in all the faculties in all the departments the poets and writers and novelists they have created much and in the present world we see that uh, many important and many big awards like booker prize pulitzer prize etc also they are won by indo anglian writers now when we talk about the present poem the poet is dilip chitre and uh, as we know that dilip chitre he was born in 1938 in baroda which happens to fall in gujarat itself he graduated from university of mumbai that uh, that was uh, that time it was called university of bombay now he had been a teacher journalist sales promotion and advertising executive magazine columnist he was also with international writing program loa he wrote both in marathi and english and also translated from classical and modern marathi poetry his first collection of poems it appeared in 1960 and after that he published a long poem in english a book of short stories and travelogues and uh, anthology of modern marathi poetry and trans in translation he was also well known as a painter and his work is in private and institutional collections in indian and the united states now we have seen a brief introduction of the poet and as you can see that he was born prior to independence in 1938 that time we were not free but uh, as i told you earlier 
a kind of atmosphere was created in which the indians living in Eng- india they had chosen english as the language of their creativity language of their writing and uh, when this poet was born i mean i'm talking of dilip chitre prior to that in 1913 tagore had been conferred on the most prestigious literary prize that is nobel prize for his gitanjali and uh, again i remind you that this uh, nobel prize were conferred on english version because tagore himself translated gitanjali from bengali into english so this can also be considered a work of indian literature arvind ghosh he had composed savitri sarojini was also creating many famous poems so in under this kind of background dilip chitre he was born in baroda and baroda was also such a city in which orvindo had taught on the invitation of gaikwad family so baroda had a rich literary tradition and uh, baroda's name actually it is vadodara so it was city of banians because here in this poem we see the reference of banian tree so naturally i would like to point out this feature that in this banian city that is vadodara this poem was composed now this poet though he was born in gujarat but basically uh, he was born in a marathi family because his parents were marathi and uh, baroda at that time was considered a place where most of the marathis lived so he had a marathi background he was born in gujarati culture and he had english as his language if we see the title felling of the banyan tree now we come on to the title of this poem here in this title two words are striking because the first, the very first word felling now if we talk according to the rules of grammar this felling is not <laughs> according to the appropriate uh, rules of grammar because the basic verb is fall and from fall the continuous tense becomes falling now this fall when we talk about its past tense it is fell but we don't have continuity of past tense that means according to the rules of traditional grammar we cannot have felling we can have falling but here the poet himself has used this word felling and uh, this i think uh, it is uh, this word has been used to represent a tradition he has not done it uh, uh, just like that but he wants to represent something very serious something very cultural and something which uh, has links with past so this word has been used and it is an uncommon use of uh, this word felling so the title goes felling of a banyan tree now what is banyan as i told you banyan tree is not a normal tree biologically it's a tree but according to our indian culture people banyan and name they are considered to be very holy trees and banyan tree it is connected with generations so it represents our old traditions old beliefs old customs and whatever was old and glorious it is represented by uh, the use of uh, this word banyan now when we go with when we take the whole title so it goes like that that 
use of the felling of a banyan tree that means this is uh, the felling of something which is very serious very cultural and uh, 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 an age is undergoing a change so something new is being created out of the old and uh, as a as a, an english poet has said the old tradition has given way to the new so new is in making old is departing but here it is not happening uh, in a regular course but new is created forcefully because old is destroyed in a bad manner and forcefully it is uh, coming to an end so uh, this is not a normal and natural process it's something uh, which is uh, very serious and which is hurting at our roots because the matter of roots has been discussed here now we enter into the actual poem so the poet starts with the introduction of his father my father told the tenants to leave who lived on the houses surrounding a house on the hill now in the very first line the poet he relates this incident to his father now father happens to fall in that tradition because father has emanated from the he has emanated from the older generations and this banyan tree was not planted by father so he says that this house was <coughs> quite uh, old and uh, this house was also quite very you know big so very many tenants they used to live there along with that family and my father gave a command to the tenants to vacate the house to leave the house as soon as possible because he wanted to uproot this banyan tree and this was not an easy task to uproot this now these tenants as the poet says he lived on the houses surrounding our house now the our house in which we lived this tree banyan tree it was not a small tree it was a giant tree and uh, naturally when it, it it will fall so it will destroy the nearby house, houses so all these tenants they lived surrounding the house when where we lived and the place was on a hill this was a hilly area one by one the structures were demolished only our own house remained and the trees the poet goes ahead and he says that because in those times you know the modern machines were not there so it was not possible to destroy all the buildings simultaneously in present world we can think of this by this bomb blasting and all that but here this was a rather manual work the laborers and masons were they were working for a number of days a rather number of months so one by one all these structures they were demolished one by one and the poet says that only our house where this banyan tree was there it remained and the surrounding houses the surrounding homes all of them were destroyed so at the last our own house remained and along with that a few trees they also remained trees are sacred my grandfather used to say felling them is a crime but he massacred them all my now again the as i told you earlier that this is a traditional poem so my father my father represents tradition and the poet goes back into the past and he brings 
ग्रैंड मदर सो ग्रैंड मदर इज अ स्टेप इवन प्रायर टू फादर नाउ एज द ओल्ड पीपुल ग्रैंड मदर्स एंड ग्रैंड फादर्स एंड ग्रेट ग्रैंड मदर्स दे बिलीव दैट प्लांटिंग सच अ पायस ट्री एज बनी एन अ पीपल इट्स अ होली एक्ट एंड इन नो कंडीशन दे शुड बी डेस्ट्रॉयड एंड दे वॉज अ होल साइंस बियॉन्ड दैट यू नो सो ही रिमेंबर्स दिस पोएट रिमेंबर्स the words of uh, his grandmother and uh, he says that my grandmother she used to say that banyan is not a normal tree but it's a sacred tree and in no condition it should be uprooted it should be cut so trees are sacred my grandmother used to say felling them is a crime so if we kill a child just as it's a crime in the same manner the if we fall a tree then uh, naturally it's a crime because scientifically trees provide us everything so felling them is a crime but he massacred them all but my father was in a different mood he was in a different kind of uh, mood so he did not pay any kind of attention and he massacred he massacred all the trees which surrounded this uh, house the shoega the odumbar the name were all cut down now the poet gives a reference of different trees which were uh, which were there in that house and he says shoega odumbar all these are indian trees and some of these trees have some foreign names but most of them they are used in their own uh, the ori- original name so odumbar it's a, again a sacred tree the name name is also again a, a sacred tree so these trees the shoega the odumbar the name the all were cut down but the huge banyan tree stood like a problem whose roots lay deeper than all our lies and then the poet he comes to the crux of the matter and he says that these small trees all these trees also they are quite large neem adum etc but uh, he says that all they were small as compared to the giant banyan tree and first the small trees were cut the poet says that they were not literally cut but they were massacred and then there came a problem that how can we uproot or how can we cut this huge banyan tree because it its size was so large that it was not easy to cut this tree and it seemed nearly impossible it, it, this this was a a giant task this was this uh, this appeared to be a herculean task how to uh, how to fall this giant uh, banyan tree and it as the poet says that it stood like a problem and because you know its roots its roots lay deeper than all our lives we were small kids when the poet he wrote this poem his father was there then he remembered his grandmother so he says that my one of my great grand parents might have planted this tree now its root they it was not easy to uproot this tree because its roots were deeper than our lives because we were small and this tree was a giant tree my father ordered it to be removed but my father was in a in a dic- dictator mood and he did not want to listen to anybody he did not pay any attention to the sayings of what people would say and uh, he was such in a he was in in such a mood that he would not pay heed to any advice any suggestion and uh, emotionally uh, he was in a different mood so he 
did not think of all these factors and he says that uh, whatever may come but uh, i will not let this tree remain here for their for long time now so he says my father ordered it to be removed at any cost it should be removed and i want to see it to be removed at the earliest the banyan tree was three times as tall as our house the poet moves ahead and uh, he says that it was not a small tree and our house was quite large it was surrounded by some other houses also all the surrounding houses were removed all the surrounding trees were removed but this banyan tree and then he goes on this poet goes on to describe the size of this huge tree because it is considered that banyan and uh, people and more specifically banyan tree it has a uh, its age is quite it it lives for number of years and it gives rise to offshoots and from these roots new roots which happens to be offshoots again new banyan trees they keep on arising they keep on growing so uh, he say the poet says the banyan tree was three times as tall as our house now it was such a huge tree because it was a very ancient tree very old tree and it was nearly three times as huge as our house its trunk had a circumference of 50 feet the poet describes that its circumference in terms of mathematics it was not possible to take in to take this uh, tree into arms because its circumference was nearly 50 feet so by this uh, by the use of this single phrase the poet has planted in our brains or in our minds a huge size so he says that nearly 50 feet circumference so in this manner the poet indirectly suggests us its uh, long age he he doesn't say that it was 100 years old or 150 years old but he simply suggest that it was very old because it had a circumference of 50 feet its scraggy aerial roots fell to the ground now the masons the the laborers who come to cut this tree they start cutting it step by step so it started with aerial roots so you know the aerial roots it happens in the case of uh, banyan tree especially uh, as i told you earlier that these aerial roots they again give birth to new banyan trees and this process goes on so the the poet has used this word scraggy see the use of this word scraggy its scraggy aerial roots fell to the ground and now this aerial roots they are uh, they are one one by one they are being destroyed from 30 feet or so first they cut the branches now the process of cutting this banyan tree has started and the poet says that nearly from 30 feet or so first they cut the branches because uh, they start cutting the branches it takes time it's a huge and giant tree and at the last they will come on to the roots so he says that nearly its height was nearly 30 feet so from 30 feet or so he does not indicate very exactly but he just suggest that it was nearly 30 feet or so they cut the branches they started cutting the branches sawing them off 
for seven days and the heap was huge now as we have seen that this was a huge tree so they were chopping the branches one by one and uh, nearly from the height of 30 feet they started cutting and then sawing them off they used a kind of instrument it is called saw and because it was a very thick tree so it was not easy to cut it with swords and therefore they had to use saw so the poet says sawing them off for seven days and the heap was huge this uh, they were cutting wood after wood branch after branch and in this manner the whole tree was uh, cut to its size you know its a huge size so for seven days nearly they used saw as the instrument and the wood a heap of wood occurred it fell on the ground so it the heap was huge lot of woods they were collected on the ground and the poet suggest that this heap of wood it was very huge insects and birds began to leave the tree now here you see a tree is not simply a tree because a tree gives shelter to different kind of birds insects because as we construct our own houses and as we live in colonies and societies and cities so on these huge trees like banyan they have the insects by birds different kind of birds if you happen to sit under a tree and especially a huge tree like people or uh, this banyan tree you come across all these uh, different kind of species of birds which you don't find uh, at every, at uh, other place so suppose we go to a forest and there these trees are there and if we just uh, sit there silently we come across those kind of birds beautiful birds which we don't find in cities so this these trees they they are basically uh, like you know uh, they give shelter to birds insects so the poet says that when this tree was cut by branch to branch so all these insects and birds which had been which had taken shelter for uh, god knows how many years and how many generations now they are living this tree one by one insects and birds began to leave the tree and they had come to know these insects and birds they had come to know that now no more will they be able to live on this beautiful tree because the human beings they are cutting this tree which is their shelter and therefore just assuming the end of this tree they started leaving the tree and then they came to the massive trunk the poet started from branches now all the branches have been cut now the massive trunk see the use of this word massive massive means huge trunk and it had a circumference of as the poet has said nearly 50 feet so it was its mass was great and then after that they come on to the massive tree massive trunk rather and the poet goes ahead he says 50 men with axes chopped and chopped the great tree revealed its rings of 200 years now in these concluding lines the poet 
is coming on to the conclusion and he says that now before us a huge trunk a massive trunk stands and it was not easy to uh, cut this trunk it needed a number of persons and the poet says that nearly 50 men 50 persons with axes in their hands they had axes now the role of saws had gone because while cutting the branches they used a saw now in this uh, huge trunk no no uh, saw will work now in their hands they have got axes and they are attacking this tree in a like butcher and a single person or a team of 2 or 3 or 7 or 8 will not do because this is a huge trunk and as the poet says that a, a team of 50 men and in their hands they had axes and in their axes with the help of their axes they chopped and chopped the great tree and when this tree was cut it was being chopped so it showed its age and the poet says it in, he indicates that it the tree revealed its rings of 200 years now here we have to understand a simple science because it's a matter of science that every tree just as human beings have the rays when we are we are child then we become grown up we become students we come to the college then we become young and then we we become 40 50 60 and then we keep on going now in this uh, in this similar fashion in this similar trend trees also have their rays but how can we know what is the age of the tree so this process, this phenomena is called annual ring so when the tree completes one year it grows a ring around its trunk and it is called annual ring annual ring means it gets a ring annually so this is a this is something you know very strange so uh, this by cutting a tree when we cut a tree we come to know of its exact age that how, uh, how many years this uh, tree is now in this in the case of this banyan tree when 50 men with axes they chopped and chopped so at the last what happens the how many rings are revealed nearly 200 rings that suggest that this tree is nearly 200 years old the poet goes ahead and he says we watched in terror and fascination this slaughter as a raw mythology revealed to us its is now you see the use of these heavy words which uh, poet is using again and again massacre slaughter Hmm? terror because he is not happy by this process when this tree is being cut the poet is not feeling happy uh, we should keep this thing in mind that he is a small child and uh, generally when trees are cut most of the child they jump in enjoyment because this is something new for them but here this poet is of that mind that he does not like the cutting of the tree and he remembers his grandmother his great grandparents who might have uh, rooted who might have planted this tree in their garden or in their courtyard and this uh, his father because his father does not like this tree and he has taken this decision to cut this banyan tree so this uh, process has started and 
the poet says that this, this 200 year old tree is being cut and we were small kids we watched in terror terror we were fearful we were not happy because uh, we had played under this under the, uh, the, the the trunk of this tree it was like our family member it was not a simple tree it was like our great grandfather though our great grandfathers they had died with the passage of time but this tree uh, it was like a memory of them so when this tree was cut with these saws and uh, axes uh, we we felt uh, that uh, something some terrorist activity is going on and we watched in terror and fascination this slaughter we were also fascinated because we had when this tree was there we had never imagined its useness it's like you know when the when when thing is there when a person of age maybe our grandfather great grandfather when he is there before us we never uh, we will never feel his or her greatness but when he is no more then we appreciate this thing that what a what a kind of person was he how great was he or she so we were fascinated we were charmed the word fascination means we were charmed and we also had the feeling of terror so we watched in terror and fascination this slaughter slaughter houses are there we are these cattle they are slaughtered so this tree is being cut but the poet he in his mind he considers this incident as a slaughter as a massacre and he says as a raw mythology revealed to us its age and the poet says that uh, he remembers his grandmother then other members of his family who used to say who used to narrate different stories about this tree in different manner and uh, this was the center of their i mean their life because every incident uh, became in the, which, which which became in their house the this tree was a witness of that this tree had seen the births and deaths of many family members it had laughed with them it had wept with them and uh, a, this was not a simply a tree which stood in their courtyard which is which stood in their garden or before their house but it was like a great grandfather uh, just expanding its branches like a gentle human being or who is always ready to bless the young ones so the poet he he he, he realizes as a raw mythology i am uh, just uh, giving you two words raw means which is not very refined raw means unrefined so many things come to us through traditions and uh, it, they are uh, they are you know simply truth and there is no uh, there is no there is no percentage of falsehood in them so the poet says that through this mythology we had come to know about the age of this tree and today when this tree was being chopped uh, one step after the other so i recall the reminiscences from that raw mythology soon afterwards we left baroda for bombay and now a change occurs in the life of the poet because this house this tree was in the city of banians that means vadodara so uh, 
they used to live in baroda he call, he calls it baroda so after that a change came and from a small place like baroda the family shifted to a to a to a metro city bombay and this change occurred after the cutting of this tree now here this tree symbolizes that the old tradition have died the new tradition the, the the new the new world has arisen and it also suggests a kind of major change which comes in the life and this change happens here in the form that their family which had been living in baroda for decades and decades now after the felling of this tree this huge and giant tree their family they shift to bombay where there are no trees except the one which grow and seeds in one's dreams now in mumbai in old earlier it was called bombay now its name has been changed to mumbai so he remembers this poet says that this uh, city called bombay it's a congested city and in comparison to bombay baroda was like a village it's a, it was like a big village so there were lot there was lot of greenery there were lot of trees there were lot of gardens and in bombay there are no trees everywhere we have concrete jungles now in the present world it has happened with most of the cities now if you go to cities you don't find many trees because trees are considered uh, something which which they grow in jungles in forest so in baroda in their courtyard in their garden they had these trees these trees were cut and now the family shifts to bombay in bombay as the poet says there are no trees but the trees actually physically they do not grow because a tree grows only when we have lot of space when we have space for garden then only we can grow a tree but here in bombay it's not possible to grow a tree except in our minds because we our childhood was passed under the shadow of that banyan tree that banyan tree has been cut we have it has it has been uprooted but it has not been uprooted from our memory in our mind it is still there and the poet says it grows and seeds in one's dreams when we dream that banyan tree it emerges again and again in our dreams its aerial roots he says aerial roots because these roots which happened to which which you know they spread so these roots they have grown in our minds looking for the down to strike now we have this mental tree the physical tree has been destroyed it has been cut and the poet concludes this poem with this line that uh, the poem the this this tree this huge banyan tree it has been cut brutally and as he says that it has been uh, uh, massacred so but the thing is that do it is no more but in our mind its imprint is there and this imprint is not easy to be removed generally what happens uh, the roots which we have in our childhood they always come with us and wherever we go we always remember our past because 
uh, it's uh, not easy to forget the past so the poet says that these roots are hanging in the air the tree is there physically it's not there but in our minds mentally it is there in our dreams this tree again and again it arises it takes a concrete shape and the its reminiscences its memories they are not easy to be washed away but when it comes to take a shape so he says its aerial roots they are looking for the ground to strike now it is not finding a ground it wants to have a space it is there it has become immortal in our mind but uh, physically it's not uh, possible to plant a tree like banyan in a city like bombay which happens to be a congested city and uh, uh, the it is so much populated city that here along with people trees can't live now those days when this poem was written when this poem was composed dilip chitre was talking of these cities of that time now if you see the condition of uh, present world now nearly every city has this problem because in no city we are left with gardens and those cities which are known for their greenery and their gardens etc even they are losing their luster and the earth as a whole uh, including our country our state our areas you know now trees they are shrinking day by day they are cut legally or illegally legally because the colonies are spreading the new societies they are uprising because every person he has this right to have a house and in case he wants to have a house then naturally these trees have to be cut now this process is a continuous process so the cities are increasing the villages are shrinking the population is shifting from villages to cities and they are leaving their villages with a heavy heart because in villages they don't have this the the people don't have permanent source of income they are losing their agricultural land for our own needs for the needs of education health employment they the more and more people now with it days they are shifting towards big cities and this process started when india became independent because at that time it was advocated that which model is to be implemented whether we should develop cities or whether we should develop our villages but then because of some conditions it was decided that industrialization would give employment it would provide employment to our huge population because as we know that our country it's a densely populated country and here the main problem is that of employment we all of us nearly we love and like agriculture but uh, this is not easy to live in village and do agriculture so they are in in the rural background these trees are there and these trees in rural background they are like family members and they are in uh, i have seen some of the places you know they are also named they are 
they are given they are called by different names so they are simply trees but the family members have their emotional attachment and the poet here since uh, he is emotionally attached to this tree so he does not like the cutting of this tree and he is in a helpless and helpless situation because he cannot uh, stop his father who in no condition he wants to he he is not uh, he is not a uh, he is not not in a such a position that uh, he should listen to somebody and he wants to disconnect the past with the present because his father is looking at future he does not have his eyes towards past he says according to him according to his father it has become necessary to cut these trees because they want to shift to some other place so this poem it shows a continuous change of not only poet his mind his family but it shows a continuous change of the whole country our country again i remind you it's considered a rural country but now these cities are getting overpopulated the villages they are deserted and people are they are more and more people they are shifting towards cities so they come but they feel that uh, they are away from their natural background but simply just for employment purpose they have to leave everything the poet does not like this uh, journey he is of uh, such he is of such temperament that he wants to live in the lap of nature but uh, they they have been forced to leave this place now in this poem if you see this is a beautiful poem by dilip chitre who was also a teacher an emotional human being a sentimental human creature and he says he he gives a lesson also that if this process goes on then what would happen i remember a, an english poet wordsworth wordsworth and coleridge if you remember the the age of romanticism so they also advocated in the then england that we should live with the nature we should live in the lap of the nature the progress is a good thing it's a welcome step but the we should continuously plant new and new trees if we want to become happy now dilip chitre he says the same thing and uh, the year was different but it is like you know a continuous thought all of us who are of this temperament that we want to live, live in the lap of nature we think in this fashion and those who want to progress they don't like trees so here in this poem the poet has given us a uh, a lesson also that wherever we go our memories our reminiscences our roots they also come with us because uh, the shifting process is easy and in present world it has become very easy to shift from one place to other but when we shift from one place to other our mind gets stuck to the same old background in which we were born here in this beautiful poem dilip chitre indicates the importance of nature and uh, a kind of feeling is uh, there in dilip chitre's poetry 
that he does not like this action of his father so he has not suggested he has not indicated but he has connected this whole thing to the traditions generations in such a manner that when we go through this poem we also uh, feel like that you know we are feeling sorrowful and all of us get connected with the uh, thinking of this poet that trees they are not simply trees but uh, they they are like our family members they are like our great grandparents who bless us continuously with their presence only they provide us they provide shelter to so many insects birds and these insects and birds they also become our family members so in this uh, natural ambience it becomes uh, it it's a rich tradition where the feeling of live and let live it arises but when we don't have any kind of trees around us then naturally we are isolated and we we feel that we are in a concrete jungle nowadays if you see the cities they are they are increasing in such a manner that literally we have concrete jungles we don't have more trees left and if the situation goes on then only the god knows what will happen the poet he had felt this thing and he connected this thing to uh, to the present world in through his own personal experience he just indicates that this thing should be uh, this thing should not be promoted and we should uh, think this these things seriously okay thank you very much samdham all gujarat integrated classroom satellite na madhyam thi jodti kadi etle sandhan